Hello, I'm Tom Solheim, a member of Bethel's Caring for Creation Committee. I'm here in my home on the east side of downtown Madison. I've been thinking about how my ideas about the environment connect with my spiritual life, and I want to share some of those thoughts briefly with you. A couple of days ago, I received in the mail a magazine called Lake Guide, which is a report on the Madison Lakes. I think a lot of you may have received it. I love these lakes, and one way or another, I stop to look at them and think about them every day. Anyway, in this magazine, a piece by Aaron Bird Bear, a citizen of the Mandan, Hadatsa, and Dine indigenous nations, um, caught my eye. And uh, the Mandan Hadatsa have a base on the Missouri River in North Dakota and Montana, I believe. In any event, he is now the Tribal Relations Director for the UW-Madison. He talked about our lakes here and said how indigenous cultures view water as alive and animated, animated with spirit. In fact, as part of his marriage ceremony, their indigenous wedding required living water borrowed from the lake and returned to the lake after the ceremony. That idea of living water made me think of our belief that God is present in all things. As Paul said in Romans 1.20, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. In other words, as I understand it, when the Big Bang occurred 13 or so billion years ago, and the universe as we know it came into being, God was there and was, in a physical sense, part of everything. And that presence continues today. Richard Rohr, an amazing monk and thinker who has written an important book calls this presence the universal Christ. And that's also the name of his book. And that presence in all things in the universe is just one manifestation of the universal Christ. Where am I going with this? I think all this means something about our special role in this vast history of the universe as that of the consciousness of the universe. We were given the capacity to figure out and understand the mechanisms of the universe. Not that we all have it, have it all figured out yet anyway, but we know something about how the universe is expanding and how old it is. We also know how the earth is changing, warming. And in that role, we are a sense, in, in a sense the conscience of creation. We under, understand enough of the processes that we can often see what is a good process, consistent with healthy, natural development, and what is an unhealthy process. As the conscience and consciousness of the universe, we are then stewards. We have the power, and are the only ones with the power, to protect and restore creation. Invasive species are not going to restore creation by themselves. The fish aren't going to clean up the lakes. Only we can. And God's or Christ's presence in the lake, waters, as it is apparent to us, and it has been apparent to indigenous people for thousands of years, demands our efforts and commitments. Would you like to pray with me? Kind and loving God, give us the peace and presence to observe creation and to see Christ's presence in the waters and all of creation. Strengthen us for service. Amen.
If you are interested in working directly with our Caring for Creation Committee, please give me or someone else on the committee a text, email, or call. My office phone number is 608-259-2627. Leave a message if I don't answer.